Cinemagraphs can be a really effective way to grab people's attention on social media and online in general. In this lesson, you'll learn how to create a cinemagraph in Photoshop using support files or photos that you've taken. We'll create this example if you follow along with me, and you'll notice only one part of the image is moving, and that's what a cinemagraph is. It's basically an animated GIF, except only one part of the image moves. Now this has a little bit of grain, and we'll talk about how we can save it at higher settings if you want. I just kept it a lower file size for this example. But if you can go online and go to cinemagraphs.com, there's a lot of examples, like this one from a, the former version of the website. It just has all of this not moving, and then just one area, that the reflection of the taxi cab is moving. And in this example, you'll see the whole photo is not moving except this one area right here. And in this example, it's pretty neat. This entire photo is not moving, of course, except this one area where the guy's moving the newspaper. So that's pretty cool. So on cinemagraphs.com, their current version, you can see in this area right here, this is moving, the leaves, the water, and then a little bit of our hair, but besides that, nothing is moving. And this one, maybe not that much of moving out here anyway, maybe from the wind, things like that. But the idea is that it loops, so it begins and ends at the same spot, and we'll talk about that. This one's pretty interesting, just the water. And they use this on online editorial, for example, on online newspapers, they will use this instead of still images sometimes. And this, the company at cinemagraphs.com actually was assigned a project by Stuart Weitzman for their Instagram ad campaign. You can see here it's covered in Ad Week. They got over 1,600 comments and 60,000 likes from fans. And it was the first of its ad campaign targeted on Instagram with cinemagraphs. So you notice nothing is moving except this area here on her shoes and the static TV. So the same thing there. So those are the four right there. So how do we get started in creating our own cinemagraphs? whether it's for our own company or brand or a client's brand, well, go ahead and open up Photoshop. The first step is to take some photos, and I'm providing those in this course. But if you want to take your own, a couple tips. You want to set your camera to burst mode. You want to take a bunch of shots right after one after the other. You want to set it to manual focus so it doesn't have to focus uh, automatically, which is going to take a little bit more time and you won't be able to take as many quick shots within that time frame. You want to set your camera on a tripod so it doesn't move in between the photos. And you also want to think about it looping, you know, what is the beginning and last frame and how is it going to match up. For example, in this one, he's got the newspaper closed and open, and then it loops back to the beginning where it's open then closed again. Or this one here, same thing. And this one, you know, the taxi doesn't just stop in the middle and then go back over here. It goes to the right off camera, and then it comes back from the left off camera like that. And then finally, you also want to think about an area that's going to be moving and not moving. So this area is the only part that moves on here. So if you want to follow along with my support files, that's fine. Just go to, in Photoshop, this is one of the ones you actually do need Photoshop. You can't do this in a lot of the other image editing programs, even though you can resize and add effects and do some other similar effects as far as color correction and lighting. But to create an animation this way, we'll need to use Photoshop. So go ahead and go to File. And we could go to Open and open all those photos and try to stack them on top of each other with the Move tool but there's a much easier way to stack them in. So what we want to do is go to File, and then Scripts, and then Load Files into Stack. Once we do that, we'll click Browse, and we just need to find those. So navigate to the Cinemagraph folder. We want to click and drag around all of these to select them all. And you'll notice they're in order. When I took these of one of my students, it goes from 3106 to 3115. All right, so I'm going to hit OK and then click, and it's just going to open those up and stack them for us in the Layers panel. And I have the PSD file in the support files as well if you want to check it out. So now we have this right here all, all stacked together. If you don't see that, go to Window, then Layers to bring up the Layers panel. 
And what we want to do is this is going to be the first frame, next frame, next frame, next frame, next frame, next frame, so on. So if that was a normal animated GIF, that's all we would do, right? But what we need to do is make it so she's not moving, but only the bubbles are coming out right there for this example. So what we need is add a layer mask. So again, make sure you got the tools panel up. Go to window and then tools if you don't. Uh, we'll need the timeline panel up eventually. That's under window then timeline. And also layers panel, window then layers. So add a layer mask. It's on the bottom of the layers panel. Looks like that circle inside the rectangle. So click that. And what we need to figure out is what area is going to be moving. And that area we want to mask out. We need to select the brush tool here. And we need to make black the foreground color. So just click that double sided arrow. If it's black then white it will flip those. Or just click it and you can drag it to black. And so we need to make sure this right here, this white box that's our mask is selected. And I think for this example it's just going to be this area. Because if we watch it, all the bubbles pretty much move right here. All right, I don't think they go outside of that, yeah. So what we can do then is paint black. I'm gonna press the left bracket arrow there to resize this. If you don't have that uh, default brush, just click up here and just select one of those there. Make sure hardness is set to 0% for a soft edge. And so I'm gonna do something like this. Click and drag, and you'll see it showing up over there. And I think that's pretty much all I want. Let's see. Make sure I got it right there as well. Whoops. I want to make sure you're on the mask right there. All right. So, and you can alt click it, and you can see this is the mask. I just want to make sure I got all that. All right. To test this, what we need to do is leave that top layer, the visibility on, so that eye icon, then just toggle the one right below it. All right, so far so good. Click the next one, click the next one, click the next one, and so on. I think did a pretty good job overall. I see a little bit of the wand in there. We could zoom in and adjust it. Again, if we want to bring that in a little bit, we can paint white in. So I could go something like that, you know, make sure I'm on that. All right, make sure that's coming out of the edge there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, that looks good. All right, so now that we've tested it by just toggling the visibility, we need to actually create the animation. So go to Window and then Timeline. That's just up here, Window, then Timeline. and Click that down arrow if it says create video timeline. We want to select create frame animation. And go ahead and click that button in the middle then once it says create frame animation. And now we want to just duplicate this first frame. So click this right here. That will duplicate that first frame. And then I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see. And then we want to toggle off the visibility of this second to top layer and then duplicate it again toggle that one off duplicate toggle duplicate toggle so we repeat that for each frame it's duplicating it I don't know if there's any oh yeah there's one more all right and then it'll go back to the beginning okay now we've got this and we want to add a delay remember so Click that first one, hold shift, and then click the last one. So they're all selected. And then click here and go to, for this one, let's try 0.2 seconds. And then press the play button. All right. Let's set that to forever so it loops. All right. Looking good. And press stop. You'll notice a little bit of the background barely moves between. That's because when I was pressing down on the shutter, uh, even though it was on a tripod, the camera was just barely moving. So to avoid that, we can use a remote shutter release. Just plug it in, and uh, that will alleviate that problem. So Because if this is not moving in the background, it shouldn't be moving in the photo, just these bubbles. But that's fine. 
for this example. So now we have our cinema graph. It's working. We like 0.2 settings. That's looking good. And it's on looping. To upload this to Twitter, which I already have it, if you go to image and then image size, it's already 1024 wide. From The original was much higher resolution, obviously, as a photo taken with a Canon DSLR camera. I resized it already, so all we have to do is go to File, and then we can go to Export, Save for Web, and then the default is, you know, you got a little bit of grain if we zoom in. So to avoid that, we'll obviously make sure it's at GIF 128, the other not 32. If you go to 32, you can see it goes a lot farther down in quality. But then as far as colors, bring that up to 256. It'll help a little bit. It'll make a larger file though, but it's only 1.057. So as long as it's below three megabytes, we can upload it to Twitter for the current parameters that they have. And under dither, if you go to 100%, or bring it way down, you can see the difference. So it's on 88 by default, but you can experiment with that as well and see if you want to bring it way up or just keep it if you don't see much of a difference you know that that's just another possibility and we have a looping option set to forever that's good we can go ahead and press play and see the preview alright so all we have to do next is go to save and then we'll save that as cinema graph and I'll just put for Twitter And what if we wanted this to be on Facebook? We could. Facebook currently, at the time of filming this, does not allow us to upload animated GIFs. It just shows the first frame if we do. So what you do is upload it to your own server or a third-party website that you can upload photos to, and then you just paste the URL in, and then it will show up. But what if you want to add a video? You know, Facebook's really good currently about uh, showing videos automatically, and it just won't have sound until you click on it. But what if we wanted this to loop in a video? Well, all we have to do is duplicate this a couple times until it's long enough for how long we want it for that preview video for a link. So what you would do is just click and then click there, holding shift. So all that is selected. And then click this duplicate uh, icon, all right? Then if I go back here, it's just looping it, but then it's going back to the same one and looping it again. All right, twice. So then I can select all those again. So another way, if I click here, and then go to Select All Frames, and then Duplicate it. And so if I go at the very beginning, right there, and press Play, and I just think about how long I want this to play as a video, I think that's probably long enough. We're up to, okay, so just reset there. We can't export this as a video when it's a frame animation. What we can do, those right here in the top right-hand corner, Click that and go to Convert to Video Timeline, and then click that again and go to Render Video. And then you can render it. For example, I'll call this Cinemagraph, Cinemagraph Facebook, Cinemagraph Facebook Video. And frame rate is 10 for this is fine. I mean, 30 frames per second is good for a person talking on the screen. 10 frames per second is good for screencast. But for this, 10 frames per second should be fine. If you don't like the quality, we could bump it up, but that should be fine. And then go ahead and hit render, and it will render that out. And so then we have the video here, I'm playing it right here. And it's just like a looping back and forth, but it's a video format. Now, if you double click on the cinemagraph, it won't really show. You know, if I double click on it right now, it'll show the frames. You know, it opens it up in Photoshop for me, but I have to actually click and drag it into a web browser and then it'll actually play like an actual GIF or GIF. So it's not going to be that size on Twitter. I'll show you. It'll be a little, it'll look a little bit smaller. So if you click into Twitter and just add, again, you don't want to do add a GIF. We just want to add photos or video. And then we're going to find that one we just created, Cinemagraph Twitter. I'm going to press open and then there we go. We can add some text, we can tweet it out, and then we're all set. And on Facebook, again, we can't upload a GIF. We can, but it'll only show the first frame, so it won't be a moving image like we want. So what you need to do is upload it to your server or another website and paste the URL there, 
or we can just use a video. So if I add photos or video and select Cinemagraph Facebook video, then it will come up with this and we can say something about it. We can add a title, add some tags, add a call to action if you, we want. I'm going to put learn more. And then you can see it'll show up. We don't have any audio for this anyway. And you can do your call to action after it stops. People can play it again. And so this one's only about seven or eight seconds. Uh, but we, if we want it to loop more, we can just add more seconds. Just duplicate those frames more. Hopefully you learned a lot about cinemagraphs, how they can capture attention in an artistic way. It's just very subtle and attention grabbing. And again, we want to save them as GIF if we're uploading them to Twitter. And then we can also upload them to Facebook, but you just got to upload them elsewhere and then put the link in there or just loop it and export it as a video. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next lesson.